Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here at the Storage View Lab, and today we're taking a look at a pair of servers that came in from ASRock Rack. We've posted deep dives on both systems, those will be linked to in the comments, but these are really interesting servers, and we just wanted to dive in a little more on the hardware and the engineering that goes into these systems. Now, ASRock Rack may not be a household name to many of you, but they've been around for almost 10 years, and they've started out in the cloud and hyperscaler space. So we run into these guys all the time at Supercompute, at Open Compute Project, and other places where they're designing really innovative solutions for the world's largest data centers. These two systems are a little more mainstream. The system in front of me is an Intel Twin Ice Lake CPU system, 2U server with 12 bays in front. What's interesting about this system and the 4U system we'll take a look at next, though, are the NVMe bays in both of them. This one's got four on top, which lets you add SSDs to either have a high-speed flash volume or to use that flash volume to accelerate the hard drives underneath. For virtualization, for database workloads, for any software-defined system, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to have a couple bays of flash, either as a flash volume or to accelerate the hard drives. And if you're in a situation where you don't need that flash support, you can put hard drives in there and just use it as a, a normal 12-bay system. If you do use the NVMe in this system, this is an Intel Ice Lake platform, which means it has VROC support on board. You can use VROC to aggregate those NVMe drives in a virtual RAID environment, which gives you one step ahead in terms of better utilizing that flash. This one's really flexible for a lot of use cases. SMBs will be able to use it as a file share. Uh, VARs or system integrators will be able to put their software of choice on there, whether it's Windows, whether it's ESXi, TrueNAS. You could do anything with this thing. You could even cluster these together, of course, if you wanted to run some sort of object storage or other software defined. As we spin this thing around back, obviously there's plenty of PCIe expansion. We've added two high-speed NICs in the system just because we were having a little fun with it. There's one gig on board. You can see the redundant power supplies here, and there's an OCP3 NIC slot in the back. So overall, there's a lot of flexibility to build these systems out. Again, if you're a system integrator, to make this what you want it to be to suit your customer needs. And inside, there's a couple other tricks that are worth taking a look at. The 2U server has a split lid design, so it comes off in pieces. The front one reveals the uh, back plane for the drives in front. Of course, these field serviceable fans are all there. There's a bank of, of those. The second piece of the lid will slide off. Removing the second half of the lid reveals the two heat sinks on top of the Intel Ice Lake CPUs. There are 16 DIMMs per CPU. And as we look further back, we can see the wiring for an additional two SATA SSD bays in the back. That's a great spot to hide your boot drives. And if we pop out this riser here, we can see that there are two more M.2 SSD bays on this as well. The cutout on the board here reveals where the OCP slot would go. And of course, the other risers hold your expansion cards. If the 2U system doesn't provide enough capacity and storage flexibility for you, then we've got this guy from ASRock Rack, the 4U system. This has got 38 externally accessible bays and a little bit more inside to give you a tremendous flexibility in terms of configuring these systems for very large storage needs. This guy supports AMD Epic CPU architecture. We put some pretty high-end CPUs inside this thing because we had them and why not? But for your real workloads for system integrators that are building these solutions for customers, you could cut that back to make this a really uh, nice storage box. If you're going to run virtualized workloads and want the power, then by all means, throw the, uh, throw the high core count CPUs in here. So this system also has four NVMe SSD bays on the front of the system. There's two in the back that we'll take a look at it in a second. But basically, this gives you the option to have, just like the 2U box, a high performance flash volume if you want that, or use it as an acceleration tier or cache for the hard drives if that makes more sense for your build. In addition to the 24 bays we showed you in the front, there's an additional set of 12 hard drive bays back here and then two more NVMe two and a half inch drive bays. So that's how we get to the 38 externally accessible drive bays. There's some M.2 inside as well if you want to use that for system boot. The system also has 10 gig onboard, which is nice, but if you need more flexibility for interconnect or support for other devices, there's plenty of half height, half length card slots in here. The expandability is actually pretty important because to access all of the drive bays in this system, you're gonna to wanna to use an HBA or RAID card to take full advantage of every single slot. 
As we take a look inside the 4U chassis, obviously as you look into the front here, you can tell it's much deeper than the 2U, twice as deep of course. If we remove this air shielding, we can take a look at what's underneath here. And that's primarily these two giant heat sinks for the AMD EPIC third gen CPUs we're using. Each CPU gets access to a bank of eight DIMMs. We've got a boot drive in one of the twin M.2 slots, and we've got a Broadcom RAID card here that's cabled up to the hard drives. Here's the back of the two two and a half inch NVMe SSDs from the rear of the system. And then we've got a number of uh, half height expansion slots uh, in the back as well. Like I said, we've got the full reports for both of these systems linked to with performance and everything else you could want in the description of the video. So check that out for more information. But the bottom line is that the Ice Lake 2U system and the AMD Epic 4U system offer SMBs a lot of flexibility with an ASRock rack solution that includes not just the chassis, but it's their board and they've got a lot of engineering in these systems. That's a little bit different than other bare bones systems. These systems are also easy to work with. They've got onboard management with an HTML interface, which makes it very easy to uh, handle updates and, and firmware. Ultimately, what we really like about these two systems is it's a great view into the ASRock Rack portfolio for SMB mainstream enterprise workloads. Not everyone's going to need the Open19 systems they sell to the hyperscalers. These two systems are absolutely representative of what can go to the SMB, what system integrators can use to deploy their solutions. They're well-engineered, well-thought-out systems with NVMe bays in both that allow for so much more flexibility. If you want to learn more about ASRock Rack and these systems, we've got the full reports linked to in the description. Check them out.